welcome. Today's topic is going to be CBN wheels. Uh, for some time I've been toying with the idea of going the CBN route um, and I weighed up all the pros and cons and I decided to take the plunge. I'm very, very pleased I was that I did. I talked to Peter Helmsley at the tool post and I <coughs> decided to buy them from him. I bought another grinder the same one as I had before, the Record Power 8 inch grinder. It's a fast speed grinder, um, again through very much uh, a lot of research before I took the plunge. Um, whether you have a slow speed grinder or a high speed grinder is immaterial. Um, the only thing I would say is that you have to be, as you do with a slow speed grinder, very, very light touches when you're using it. I'd like to say from the outset um, I'm not being sponsored, I wasn't given the wheels or the grinder to do a review. Um, I purchased them and it was a purchase that I made um, uh, instead of going for a, um, <clears throat> a thicknesser because the times I'd use a thicknesser are really negligible but I use my grinder every time I come in the shop. So, OptiGrind offer uh, three grades of wheel and I went with what they call the standard grade, the standard wheel, which is 120 to 150 grit approximately. And I use that for uh, reshaping, not that I do a terrific amount, it's very effective at that. If I'd gone for the coarse wheel, um, I mean it would have been obviously a lot quicker, but I can't see the advantage of that to be honest with you, because this doubles up um, for scrapers, um, and uh, indeed large bowl gouges if you're doing heavy removal work. So this is a great wheel to go for, for general purpose. Uh, it's 8 inches um, in diameter. It has a 40mm face, or inch and a half face, and the important thing is that the abrasive material is electroplated to the substrate wheel. So, and again through research, um, that is the best method for the um, abrasive to be attached to the substrate, electroplating. It uh, <coughs> gives a much more even finish apparently and it also um, has a much longer life. The other wheel I, use, uh, I got is the fine wheel which is between 220 and 240 grit. Um, the mark down the centre is something I did, it's nothing to do with the wheel, it doesn't affect the um, the capabilities of the wheel at all, but there was a film on here and stupidly I didn't remove it before I tried the wheel out. Um, it, is, it is removing as you can see, it just looks a bit unsightly, but it doesn't affect the performance of the wheel at all. The <coughs> Um, the abrasive side goes to one side of the wheel as well, which is handy for certain applications. They're factory balanced. Uh, you do need a, um, a bushing to fit your particular spindle. Uh, the spindle on the record power is 5 eighths of an inch and I purchased two um, bushings. Now the bushings were a little tight to go in there, which is brilliant. Uh, a little bit of a light sanding with uh, 600 grit and I got it fitting absolutely snugly as I'll show you in a second. While I was researching um, CBN wheels, uh, there were two great sources of information. The first was from a guy called Larry Hooch, um, who is uh, the owner, I believe, in the States of D-Way Tools. He's got some great videos on CBN wheels, the ones that he, he manufactures and supplies. So you want some really good information, go to, go to his site, I'll put a link down below. And the other guy was Reed Gray or Robo Hippie. He's got a channel on YouTube and I'll put a link to his channel. Um, I'll also put a link to a paper that he wrote on CBN wheels um, and that was absolutely packed full of really useful information for me. Um, Reed has actually had some wheels for over 10 years and he's a professional turner and they're still going strong. So longevity is one of the key features as well. So that, as I say, I'll put those <coughs> links in the description below. 
And one final thing I'd like to give a shout out to a guy called Martin Saban Smith. Martin's been turning for about a year now, 18 months, and he produces some wonderful work. He's very heavily into uh, texturing and scorching, pyrography, uh, immense talent, got some fabulous pieces he's done. So I'll put a link to Martin's channel down below, so go across and watch his videos and learn from them and subscribe and like his videos too. So that's Martin Saban Smith. So now we'll go over to the grinder and get down to the nitty gritty of the CBN wheels. So we have the wheel. Now with the record power and various other grinders will have different specifications etc. So this is purely for the record grinder, the 8 inch grinder. It's a high speed grinder. You can, you can put the CBN wheels on a low speed grinder as well but I don't think there's any need. That's my personal opinion and others have the same opinion. The problem I have is that the spindle is too long. Now the wheels as I say are factory balanced and you can play around with them a little bit like you would with your ordinary uh, composite wheels to get the best position. The, the weak link is this chappy here which is um, a, co a collar which goes on the spindle nearest the machine. Now if I don't put that collar on uh, the wheel and the 5 eighths um, bushing and the washer, unfortunately I can't get the thread, it, it falls short so I have to put this on. So this is this came with the grinder and a um, bit suspect regarding the balance, how balanced that is, but that goes on first. Okay, then the 5 eighths bushing now that bushing I had to sand, as I explained, with 600 grit because it was a little tight to fit in the wheel, which is good, which means there's absolutely no play in there at all. Now the uh, flange goes on the um, solid side and that just fits in like so and there's absolutely no movement there whatsoever. That in turn goes on to the spindle. Sometimes, um, with the spindle as well, where the thread comes to an end, um, there's a little shoulder there, if you like. You might have to just smooth that out to get the, um, to get the bushing on. And then you follow that with a washer, and the pack that, comes, that you buy extra is, uh, includes the washer and, of course, the The pack comes with the washer and of course the thing that goes in the middle and I can't think of the name of it. <laughs> dear oh dear, come on Walt. This is a sign of age. I'm going to keep this in I think. <coughs> the bushing. Okay, so you put the washer on and then bearing in mind that your um, threads, you tighten this up. This is a left hand thread and then you have a right hand thread over there. Okay, now you don't need to tighten this up to white knuckle status, just snug it like so, and that wheel, without, much move, without any adjustment, is moving, is running quite true. Okay, so we'll, I'll do the same with the other spacer, and then as I say, put the um, bushing in. On the spindle. Then the washer. And your nut. And again, you don't need to tighten up. Just nice and snugly. Oh, there's no movement, which there isn't. And that's it actually sorted out. Now, some specs. Each wheel weighs 8 pounds 3 ounces, which is a lot of weight. You've got 16 pounds of wheel here. Now, <clears throat> this grinder is a 500 watt grinder, so it takes something like 13 seconds for it to spin up to speed. 
Now when I turn it on for the first time, I don't know whether it's going to be really balanced or I've got to move it slightly, but the wheels run very nicely. So I'll turn him on. Hardly any vibration. Now the one thing is, when you turn off, believe it or not, until these wheels actually come to a total rest, and I timed it, Sam person that I am, it took just over 14 minutes. So, without any danger, a paper towel and just apply pressure. Nothing too much, just a slight bit of pressure. That clicking you can hear if the camera picks it up is the uh, balance hole, the counterbalance hole. I press very slightly on the inner rim and then towards the spindle as well and that brings it to a halt but believe me it does take 14 minutes for these chappies to actually come to a stop without using that don't use a cloth in my opinion because if you the same with the lathe if you're gonna if you get it caught in there it could rip your hand okay so i just thought i'd show you very quickly how easy it is the important thing as i keep saying <coughs> is very little pressure you don't want to be jamming it in to the wheel you don't need to just the weight of the tool so we start him off always wear a minimum of um, goggles once it starts it quietens down quite a bit uh, because you're still wearing you're still removing particles of steel and you don't want that to get in your eye. So, with a scraper, literally that's all you need and that's done. A perfect bevel and this is my uh, half inch spindle gouge again on the fine wheel no pressure, just the weight of the tool and as you can see a perfect grind and that's all that's needed. That's the CBN setup that I've got. I hope you found it interesting. A few key points just to go over in summary. Um, the brilliant thing with these wheels obviously is that you don't have to dress them, you don't have to clean them. They don't reduce in diameter so if you have a setup on there when you're doing a particular project you merely need to come back there's no way that the wheels are going to uh, shrink in size as they do with aluminium oxide very few people i've found actually dress their aluminium oxide wheels every time before they actually use them well you should do you should always dress your wheels before you use them that way they will work to their maximum capacity and create less heat. A problem you don't have with these wheels. Um, if you apply too much pressure, for sure, you're going to generate more heat and there is a possibility of blowing your tool. You have to get used to the technique needed to get the most from CBN wheels. Um, and I promise you this, if you try them, you will wonder how you ever did without them. They are absolutely stunning. Or as they say in the States, awesome. I can't say enough about them. I hope you found it interesting um, and if you are considering it, uh, take a look at the other links I've put in in the description down below and any comments will be welcome from people who have got more experience with CBN wheels than I have and put them in the comments below so that we can all learn from them. Well again, thanks very much for watching, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you soon. Cheers now.